never suspected I'd compose this, yet I can't stop thinking about my twin flame. What's more, it's not something worth being thankful for, here's why it's bringing me down. Why I can't stop thinking about my twin flame and why it's an issue. I've generally considered myself a fairly confident individual with sound confidence. However, the ongoing issues with my twin flame make them question everything. We used to consume brightly together, yet presently it's become toxic and uneven. I can't stop thinking about my twin flame. Yet it's at this point not lovingly or appreciatively, it's in a destitute and subordinate manner. The issue lies here. 1. The contemplations and emotions have become overwhelming. In the first spot, there's just such a lot of time in the day. I can't stop thinking of my twin flames so much that I can scarcely finish anything during the day. At night rest is just a slim chance, and melatonin pills have turned into my new dearest companion. It's truly turned into a gigantic problem. And it's arrived at the point that I can't continue to imagine this is solid any longer. I've gone too far into more toxic territory where my emotions of missing my twin flame and wanting additional time with her are clouding my ability to overcome the day and finish my work. That is not to mention friendships and family ties which have blurred. The total of my thoughts and care about is my twin flame, and the obsession has become intellectually and emotionally crippling. Two. I'm caught in a go big or go home mindset. I have a habit of being a bit dramatic. Life is either sunshine and roses or the pits of agony. Furthermore, since my twin flame decided we wanted a little time separated, and that a relationship was not the smartest idea for us, I've been stuck somewhere down in highly contrasting thinking. The idea that my life is finished, that she's my main expectation, that I have no place left to go, etc. are prominent in my mind. It's caused me to ignore different girls who have shown an interest in me, remain in when I might have gone out and had some good times, get lethargic and work, and lose interest in different objectives in my life, including fitness, and a desire I needed to figure out how to be a superior groundskeeper. Presently I find myself thinking instead about what my twin flame likes to do, and her affection for gardening and watching unending YouTube videos on that, with the expectations of striking up a conversation with her again so I can associate that way, yet, she's now been entirely evident that we want time separated, so the thing precisely am I trying to accomplish, this highly contrasting thinking is destroying me, 3. I'm frantic for answers and quick fixes, the gardening examination and fixation is only perhaps the most surface model, I don't have a green thumb to save my life, Yet if it could simply reignite my twin flame I'm about it. I'm frantic for answers and quick fixes. There's a genuine absence of acknowledgement going on somewhere inside me, where I admit that I feel reliant upon the validation and interest of my twin flame to live a fulfilled and commendable life. I know that is unfortunate, so I need to transform it. In any case, each time I attempt to get moving on my objectives and priorities, I find my mind telling me that it's every one of the exercises in futility, because without or my life isn't worth the effort. Twin flames are something profoundly special, yet I truly need to begin valuing myself and my life independently of any outside validation. The site Current Treatment says, while outside validation can be felt far better on occasion, that feeling can easily wear off, instead of getting baffled or blaming yourself, internal validation permits you to acknowledge the situation and tell yourself, I did all that can be expected, or I realize this is everything that could be finished right now, and push ahead. What's more, I realize that it's valid for 
A genuine psychic confirms it. The signs I'm revealing in this article will give you a smart thought of what it's like to miss a twin flame, yet, might you at any point get considerably greater clarity by speaking to a genuine psychic? You need to find somebody you can trust. With such countless phony psychics out there, it's important to have a very decent BS identifier. After going through a muddled separation, I as of late tried Psychic Source. They provided me with the guidance I wanted in life, including who I intended to be with. I was amazed by how kind, caring, and proficient they were. A gifted advisor can not just let you know where things stand with your twin flame. However, they can likewise uncover all your adoration possibilities. 5. I'm pursuing things I don't need or need just to see and interact with my twin flame. Of late, I've been buying up a wide range of music and old collectibles that my twin flame cherished in a request to attempt to interact with her. This includes antique Japanese watercolor paintings of the kind I realize she cherishes. I got some information about them, yet relax. I'm completely mindful of the way straightforward my behavior is and how she sees through me. I've dropped quite a bit on the watercolors more than I need to spend, and my lease is starting to hurt all the more every month. It's miserable, I know. In any case, reality harms. Of late I've begun to feel like I'm bordering on stalking too, including scrolling all through her social media consistently the day. I realize I want to endlessly stop trying to compel this. 6. I've forever been excessively willing to do anything they desire. A piece of what prompted my ongoing fixation on my twin flame and our alienation is that I've forever been excessively willing to do anything that my twin flame needs. I'm embarrassed that I even minimized a portion of my guiding principle and beliefs in request to oblige and speak to what she believes and thinks often about. As you can predict, that didn't work by any means. And it is essential for what prompted us to drift separated. She let me know I want to stick up for myself more, and can't rely upon her for my happiness, after continually telling me how I want to change to be a superior and more holistic individual. It appears to be contradictory to me, yet I suppose that is the point. At the point when you base your decisions on someone else even your twin flame you can wind up abandoned without answers or solutions, and with a wrecked heart. 7. I'm living far before and my heart's a fossil. My twin and I were connected three and a half long times back. It's a boring tale, yet, we're currently separated. Furthermore, that wedding band is in a pawn shop someplace. After how things went down, I need to say, if it were any other person I would have strolled the alternate way and never thought back. In any case, with her I just can't do that. She genuinely implies more to me than any individual I've at any point met. It's something intangible that I don't have any idea how to explain. Yet entirely it's genuine. The issue is I'm caught in the past like a corridor of funhouse mirrors. I continue to catch old versions of myself and stubbing my toe or smashing into myself in my endeavor to return to the status quo. I can't appear to acknowledge that since she's my twin flame doesn't necessarily mean we'll wind up all together couple. 8. The lies are piling up. I've been lying to myself for more than a year at this point, since our separation, truly. Even though at first the pain was cruder, and I flew off on an excursion to seek after my fantasies, while trying to disregard her, I see now that I was trying to push down the pain, and that it was the very opposite of what I ought to have been trying to do. I ought to have been accepting the harm and processing it or channeling it into productive things. In any case, instead, I was chasing pie in the sky. Cash, ladies, recognition, and professional wins with the expectation that other outside things would validate the opening in my heart. They didn't, and when they blurred I just switched right back to her. It's very undesirable, and that's what I know. However, it's gotten some margin to be willing to confront it, 
and ready to answer effectively. 9. I feel like my twin flame has a place in me. I was a big time attention searcher when it came to my twin flame. Yet I likewise had my twisted side of things. I felt like where it counts she had a place with me and was my property. I don't truly intend that in a completely patriarchal sort of way. More like in an individual way if that checks out. I believed that the strength of her connection implied she was simply destined to accompany me and be mine. And that was the finish of the story. However, somehow, life continues to move. Also, when it happens down the line you find out that no individual has a place with any individual, and that clinging to this idea of security leaves you high and dry. 10. I'm not doing alright. Toward the day's end, if I was humming along fine, I wouldn't be so worried about the way that I can't stop thinking about my twin flame. She meant the world to me she still does. So having some emotional remainder or desire appears to be completely typical to me. Yet, in all actuality, my fixation on getting her covered, convincing her I'm enough for herself, and finding ways of connecting back dependent upon her life, have cut me down and out. I feel like a husk of myself. I walk the road scouring craftsmanship galleries for old Japanese paintings like some weird person from a Woody Allen film. And I'm more neurotic than even he was. Depression, obsessive compulsive tendencies, nights spent fantasizing about us being together while taking pills I ought not to be taking. It's a terrible way to go down and I'm just about at its exceptionally most awful piece. Also, I need to pivot. In any case, each cell in my body is telling me that without her there's no point. 11. Being with her simply brings me down more. However, listen to this. Being with my twin flame nowadays brings me down more. Sensing that she's not completely into me and zeroed in on other life priorities and difficulties causes me to feel like shit. I then, at that point, take my idealized version of her and match that facing her new straightforward disposition, and I sometimes begin wondering if it would be better to at no point ever meet her in the future. I maintain that she should be how she was previously. What's more, to act that way with me. In any case, she's on a different page nowadays. Why can't I simply acknowledge that? What to do when you're out of offset with your twin flame? So I'm out of offset with my twin flame and can't stop thinking about her. If you're in a similar boat as me, then there are a couple of pieces of advice I have for you. 1. Show restraint. Beneficial things take time. That goes for twin flame connections too. If you have the desire to find solutions right this second or have an acceptable method for getting your twin flame to abruptly fall back in affection with you then, at that point, Resist that desire with all your willpower. It's a misleading temptation, since in all actuality you're not responsible for anybody, but rather yourself. What's more, your twin flame will interact and connect with you in any way the person in question picks. Sometimes when it's not going how you'd like everything thing you can manage is intensively centered around something else, and let everything else follow through to its logical end. 2. Be resilient and creative. The most ideal way to stop thinking of your twin flame is to prioritize strengthening yourself. I'm talking intellectually, spiritually, and physically. Your resilience is a gift that can never be exhausted by outside factors. What's more, the same thing goes for cleverness. Motivational speaker Tony Robbins puts this so well when he discusses how the vast majority who complain about an absence of assets experience the ill effects of an absence of cleverness. Assets run out, cleverness doesn't. Positive outer circumstances fade, but resilience doesn't. Commit to your objectives and transform the pain and battle into victory. Your twin flame is likely to be stepped back to you like a moth drawn to, regardless of whether or not it'll be worth the effort for the good of its own. Turn into the kind of individual you'd go gaga for. It works. 
3. Take a stab at evoking their inner legend. Perhaps you and your twin flame are out of equilibrium, since they're not feeling content in the relationship, perhaps it's simply an instance of triggering their inner legend to start your connection. I imagine you're conjuring images of superheroes right about now, however, I'm talking about something different. I'm talking about the legend instinct. Relationship master James Bauer details everything you want to realize about what drives men with his new idea, the legend instinct, including why most men feel unsatisfied in their relationships. Through his examination, he's pinpointed three drivers that make men commit. Without these drivers being met, they're likely to skip from one individual to another, remaining discontent with their affection lives. In any event, connecting with their twin flame might not be sufficient. This video explains more about the legend instinct and how to involve it in your relationship. Presently, you might be wondering why it's designated the legend instinct. Do folks truly have to feel like superheroes to commit to a relationship? No. It has nothing to do with Wonder Studios. There's a compelling reason need to play the maid in distress to draw in your twin flame back. What the legend instinct uncovers is that when men have these simple drivers triggered, a switch flips, their questions and fears of commitment dissolve, they love further. Also, the greatest aspect, it comes at no expense or sacrifice to you. You should simply roll out little improvements to how you treat him, stir his inner legend, and perceive how quickly he returns into your life. Also, the method for doing this is by checking out James Bauer's amazing free video here. He shares a few simple tips to kick you off for example, sending him a 12-word message to normally trigger his legend instinct. That is the excellence of the idea it's just a question of knowing the right things to share with your twin flame, to make him esteem you in your relationship. What's more, who knows, simply the text alone might be sufficient to move him back in. So ensure you look at Bauer's advice before giving up on him. 4. Be straightforward with yourself. It's important to be straightforward with yourself about what's happening inside you. Try not to attempt to feel extraordinary in any event. When you don't and stop trying to deal with the universe like it's on a mission to get you or has some special proviso you simply haven't found. Everybody experiences unforgiving disappointments in life. Everybody has had the obsession that if they could simply find this one mystery or one escape clause, everything they could ever want would materialize and life would stop being hard. That is the explanation so many pickup artists sell books and pyramid schemes pop off Amazon like insane. Everybody needs a magic button, simple responses, and another opportunity to get what they need instead of disappointment. Be that as it may, it's not generally an option. So be straightforward with yourself about why it is that you can't acknowledge the ongoing situation with your twin flame. What is the emotional feeling at the core of this? Is it childhood separation anxiety, feelings of disgrace, or inadequacy from bullying in high school? Past maltreatment resurfacing as a subconscious attraction to being mistreated. 5. Base your happiness on you. The best individual to put together your happiness is you. It's not only that any other individual can let you down, it's likewise that no other person can live your life for yourself, and vice versa. Through every one of the skirmishes of history, biology, and spirituality that made you today, you have a unique destiny and skill set that no other person has. Indeed, even your twin flame might be the same intertwined way, yet she or he still isn't you. Base your happiness and fulfillment on you, and you'll be well along the track to a life of meaning, and imparted experiences to considerably more to impart to a friend or family member or twin flame, than when you attempt to hook onto happiness or the adoration for someone else. Love and twin flame connections are beautiful, yet they're no brilliant ticket. Furthermore, there's no easy route to becoming a self-actualized, 
self-subordinate individual. 6. Think about adoration in another manner. Not all twin flame connections are something very similar, and not every one of them is sexual or romantic. Yet, when they are it can be especially difficult to acknowledge that it isn't going how you like. You feel this profound soul connection and they do as well, or possibly they did. What changed? It's past because of think about affection in another manner. As something you increasingly off voluntarily yet never think of like something, you want to fill a neater hole. You are adequate. You are sufficient. Feel that somewhere down in your bones and afterward find a method for sharing that with people around you, including your twin flame. If the person comes around to sharing a similar desire, finishing contemplations, the twin flame connection is something special. Yet entirely it's not similar all the time. Regardless of whether you're 100% certain that this individual is your twin flame, you can't rest on them. Twin flames sometimes have difficult and specific excursions that take them along extremely unique streets in life, and these ways don't necessarily in every case end in marriage or a drawn-out relationship. You might need to be more than friends, and there might be potential for that. Yet depending on it or staking your happiness on someone else's reactions and decisions is a genuine recipe for disaster. Even though it is a particularly tempting thought, it is true regardless of whether we had the option to control others it would be unsatisfying. There's no triumph in adoration that is by pressure or not genuine. It either occurs genuinely or it doesn't work out. Furthermore, when you feel like you ought to push is in many cases the best time to leave it alone and require some investment. I can't stop thinking about my twin flame. However, using the guidelines as lights along my way, I'm prepared to begin turning those contemplations into proactive action and life objectives, instead of reliance and mutually dependent craving into genuine consideration, which for this situation implies giving my twin flame her space.